Come on, give Jesus the best praise today, everybody. Come on, do better than that. Give him the best praise today, everybody. Oh, yeah. Man, man, man. So great to see you today. I do bring you a howdy from Texas. The great nation of Texas. And uh, I'm not from there. Yeah, the, you are. Um, there's always that one Texan that just hollers everywhere. Keep standing. I have to stand the rest of the service, so... I hope you're still standing uh, before we go to God's Word, but um, I, I am so honored to be here. Let me, and the reason I want you to stand is I want you to honor um, a couple of things. There, there's something very unique about the gathered body of Christ. There's something very unique, and occasionally, generationally, God will anoint a house with a unique anointing that touches the world, that really is a global anointing that you, that, that, the, the body of Christ globally will benefit from. And today, whether you know it or not, you are in a house of that kind of anointing. Your reputation precedes you. This is an amazing place. Come on, are you thankful for your church? Oh yeah. And there's a reason for that. And, and the reason is really spiritual. Honestly, there's a biblical explanation as to why you feel what you feel when you come to Life Point Church at every location, why you feel it in your home today. And the reason is, is an anointing that rests at the top. Aaron in the Old Testament is the, Mos is the brother of Moses. You, you know Moses, the great deliverer from Pharaoh. But Aaron, his brother, is the first high priest to God. As they build the tabernacle, the first portable church. Come on, portable church is the first portable church in the desert. Setting up and taken down, Aaron was the high priest. The Bible said when they anointed Aaron, they didn't anoint with oil like we do today. They, they poured four or five quarts of oil over Aaron's head, which is fun. I wish we did that. But anyway, so they anointed him. And the, listen, look, the Bible says, listen to this. It says the oil flowed from his head to his beard, to his cloak, to his sandals, to the floor. Every time you see oil in the Old Testament, it's a type and shadow of the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. And the anointing always flows from the top down. So the reason why your lives have been transformed here, the reason why you feel the mighty miracle working presence of God today in church is because pastors Daniel and Tammy are anointed of God, global leaders, generals in the body of Christ, and it's... Do you love your pastors? Come on, everybody. Oh, yeah. I love you. I honor you today. Come on, grab your Bibles. Stay standing. God, speak to us today. Every person, every location, every home. God, I thank you for God's Word. Come on, hold your Bible close to your heart. Thank you for this book. This is more than just a good narrative, a good collection of stories. This is God's Word to me. I'm open to what it says. I'm going to leave here changed today, better today, encouraged today, lifted today strengthened by its words today. My year is going to be different because I started it in God's house. I thank you for that. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody shout amen. amen. Come on, shout a better amen at every location. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Um, why don't you look at somebody you came to church with, sat right next to you, say, you look good in church. You look good if you're in your house. You look good. You look good. Look at the other person, your second choice. Tell them you're all right. You're okay. You'll do. Have a seat. That really is for all the single people to be able to sort of make a move right there. You know what I mean? That's a good, it's a good chance to make a move. Um, we are beginning a new series today called Hindsight is 2020, all about learning lessons in chaos. And the truth is everybody lived through some chaos last year. Everybody had some sort of chaos in their life. But if you only live through chaos and you don't learn through chaos, you're destined to repeat chaos. I'm already preaching better than you're amening. If you live through chaos and don't learn through chaos, you're destined to repeat chaos. There's some stuff you and I have to come out of a season like 2020 learning. There's some stuff that we need to grow. There's some stuff that God wants to teach us. There's some stuff 
that we need to know that we passed the test. I was a bad test taker in school. Where's all the bad test takers? Come on, every location, hands up. All the, it didn't matter how much I studied. didn't really matter if I knew the material or not. I just clammed up at the time of the test. How many of you were good test takers? You didn't have to study. You were just good at it. Keep your hands up. We want to know who to beat up after church. I see you. I, I, it just didn't matter. There's just a test. The worst words your teacher would say in school is make sure you focus on chapter two because there's going to be a test. I wish heaven would give me a warning when there's going to be a test. You know? The, the fact is I've been taking tests all of my life. So have you. When you're born, the doctor gives you a hearing test. Can you hear me? The doctor gives you a sight test. The, the, the doctor makes sure you're breathing well. In school, you have to pass a test to make sure you can go to the next grade. Or some of us, we have to, you know, take the same grade a couple of times, whatever. Anyways, and so uh, there's, a, there's a driving test. Some of y'all need to go back and take a driving test again because y'all forgot about the merge on the interstate business. There, there's a lot, there, the only thing you do in life, the major thing you do that doesn't have a test is a marriage test, and I think there ought to be. Come on, somebody. <laughs> like, I think, I think there ought to be a test. Brandy and I, my wife, just celebrated 20 years together this year, 20 years of marriage. Thank you. She's not here, but she deserves that. And, uh, and we have two beautiful babies, uh, Hazel, who is nine years old, Henry, who is six years old. And for the first 10 and a half years of our marriage, we struggled with infertility. In silence, we told no one. Uh, we didn't go see the doctor. We were scared to know the answer. Um, several miscarriages later, 11 years into our marriage, uh, she gave birth miraculously. We had no treatments, nothing. She gave birth to our beautiful baby girl. And then two years and nine months later, she gave birth to our baby boy. And now I make Brandy sleep in the guest room. Come on. <laughs> you know. And... Um, and, and, and I've been taking tests in marriage. I, you know, there's some stuff I just don't learn. I wish I would learn. There's, there's some stuff in my life I just haven't learned yet. 20 years later, all the married dudes say amen to that. I just wish I would learn when to shut up. When I don't have to have an answer. When she's not really, oh, I thought you were asking for my advice. Oh, okay, you just wanted to talk. Okay, I thought you wanted a solution because I had a solution two or three words in. I thought you were looking for a solution. Who I'm preaching good today. I, I, was, I was trying to help you. You didn't want help. The truth is there's tests in every area of your life, and there's tests in your spiritual life. Believe this or not, write this in your notes if you're taking notes today. If you're not, write this in your notes anyway. I don't know why you would come to church and not take good notes. So write this in your notes. Your life is filled with opportunities called proving grounds. Your life, your spiritual life, is filled with opportunities called Proving grounds. I got off in a YouTube wormhole while I was deep in prayer. I wouldn't advise praying and YouTube, but anyway, I was, I'm spiritual like that. So I was praying about today's message, and I was deep in this YouTube wormhole about bears and, and how they make trash cans that are bear-proof in, in Colorado. And a few hours of YouTube later, I learned that there's a very specific kind of trash can that can wear the label of bear proof. And the only way you know if a trash can is bear proof is if you put enough bears around the trash can to attack it and they tear it up and eat trash and it's the coolest thing. You got to watch it today after church and they just tear it up all. That's the only way you'll know. But when things attack me, and when problems come into my life, I blame God. Why in the world would you let this be so bad? But could it be, listen, that God has a destiny, an anointing, a ministry, a favor, a blessing, a label. He wants to put on you, but he can't until he proves that you can handle it. Write this down. God will require us to prove our potential on one level before being promoted to the next. God will require, that's, I, I chose that word correctly, God will require you to prove your potential on one level before he'll promote you to the next. I'm, I was raised in church, real churchy, like organ kind of churchy. Come on, y'all don't know my kind of churchy. Anyways, and, and anybody raised churchy? Where's all the church? You can usually, I could usually see you during worship. Y'all was mm, 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 in the choir and whatnot. Where's all the heathens? You, this is the first church you've been in. Come on. 
I love y'all. Y'all are y'all my favorite. In the old church, we used to say it like this. With every new level, there's a new devil. Church people. It's always easy. They rhyme. I don't know why spiritual people rhyme like that. It's a gift I have. Anyway, every new level you go to, listen, and every new level in your life, every new level of anointing, responsibility, blessing, favor is a test from God. It's a test from God. It's a test to know, can I handle more? Is God, what, what's God needing in my life? I wish there was a time heaven would warn me there was a test coming, but they usually just come as problems. And today I want to reframe your mind. I, you're not going to leave today totally changed. I just want to give you perspective on the testing of our faith. I want to reframe your mind. I wish heaven would have warned us about 2020. I would have bought all the toilet paper in Texas. Why y'all brothers been taking toilet paper like that? Don't do that. I would have stocked up on that junk. I would have put, I would have, instead I had to beat up old ladies in the store and take, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I did, I, I did that once. But anyways, I wish God would warn me. I wish God would warn you. But he does in a problem. You see, when trials and problems and circumstances and misunderstandings and disappointments and heartbreaks come into your life, they're not there to tempt you. They're there to test you. They're not there to harm you. They're there to help you. God uses proving grounds, areas of our life to say, can he handle more? Is, it, is there potential on this level so I can open a door to the next? Let me show it to you in God's word. James 1 says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, joy. Not, don't, don't walk out of 2020 uh, uh, upset and angry and full of anxiety and depression. Consider it joy. Whenever you face 2020 trials of many kinds, consider it pure joy when you face all of that because you know that the, underline this in your Bible, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And let perseverance finish its work. That's what I want to preach to you today, is let it do what it's supposed to do. I didn't put that on the screen, but you need to write it in your notes. Touch your neighbor and say, let it do what it do. Let it do what it does. Let it do what it's supposed to do. Trials are not supposed to take you under as a child of the Most High God. Trials are supposed to teach me, stretch me, grow me, refine me, strengthen me, encourage me, lift me, so that I'm ready for the next devil. So that I'm ready for God to open the next door in my life. So that you are mature and complete and don't lack anything. You grow in the classroom. You grow muscles in the gym. At least that's what Pastor Daniel says. I don't know. <laughs> but I've been told. Folk get in there and work out for muscles. Whatever. I, I, I just know the babies are born under pressure. Things are developed in your life in pressure points. And God wants to birth something new in you in 2021 that he couldn't do until you pass the test of 2020. And God wants to open doors in your life that he cannot open. It physically, it can, I'm not saying God, it, it's impossible for God. I'm saying it's impossible for you. It'll kill you if you haven't passed the test on this level so that God won't. So some of us, I'm preaching now, so, so I'm going to get my hanky to prove it. Some of y'all are, we're praying for God to open doors up that we're not ready to walk through. And God loves you too much to give you the next level till you've passed the test on this level. <laughs> Every test has a question that has to be answered. Every test, write that in your notes, has a question that has to be answered. What's God asking you? Every test has a question that has to be answered. Jesus sees in John 6, he sees a crowd he looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, and he says to Philip, Philip, where are we going to buy bread for all these people to eat? Let me pause here and tell you, that's how I know Jesus is against keto. <laughs> Y'all got to preach a husky, brother. Come on now. Bread. He did not say beef jerky. Brother said bread. Where are we going to get bread for these people to eat? And Philip kind of scratches his head 
And he doesn't answer the question correctly. Andrew ends up answering it. There's a boy here I found with, with, with loaves and fishes. Verse 6, but he asked him this. Jesus asked Philip to test him. He already had in mind what he was going to do. Look into my eyes. God already knows the answer to your deepest prayer. God's just waiting on you to pass the test so he can open the door. God's not up there scratching his head going, I've never seen this one. I don't know. This has it ever occurred to you that nothing's ever occurred to God? Nothing's ever occurred to God. God never goes, I didn't think of that. <laughs> but that's a good idea. I didn't think of that. And we're desperate and praying and spending 21 days begging for God to open the door. God's not going, I don't know. I don't know if this. What God's going, okay, I'll open that door. But first, there's a test. Now, I've identified nine tests that I think every believer goes through. I want to give them to you. If you write fast, would you write these down? I'm not going to preach all nine because I'm hungry and I'm a little husky. And so I'm not going to preach all nine. I'm just going to give you two or three today to help you. But the test of small things, the motivation test, why do I do what I do? The credibility test, can you be trusted the more people get close to you? You ever get closer to someone and they don't appear to be what they were? Uh, let me teach it to you like this. All the single people, you ever see somebody's profile picture, they look like Beyonce, and then when you see them in person, they look like Snoop Dogg? <laughs> don't Google either one of those. If you don't know, just ask. Don't Google. <laughs> the real preacher comes back next week. Can you be tr Are you credible? Are you who you say you are? That's a credibility test. I think believers go through it in their life over and over and over. The wilderness test. The, the authority test. The authority test. I think this one's probably one that's been challenged in our culture uh, recently more than anything else. Can I honor and love and follow authority that I disagree with? The authority test doesn't come when you're under authority you agree with. It comes when you're under authority you disagree with. The warfare test, can I fight my way through this? Christianity isn't for sissies. That's Texas. I, in Virginia, y'all probably have a nicer way to say that, but it, 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 can I battle? Am I gonna, are there some things in my life worth fighting for? That's the warfare test. I, I think every believer goes through the warfare test. The lordship test, I think, it's, I think it's foundational to our faith in Jesus. The offense test, the offense test. Am I choosing to be offended and not live offended. Do you know you can be offended and not live that way? Do you know you can be offended and not live offended? Matter of fact, if you'll choose to do that, you'll have more joy in 2021 than anybody else you know in your office if you'll choose not to live offended, even if you are offended. And then finally, the test of time. Let me give you these top three. Write this down. The test of small things. The test of small things. And, and tests always ask a question. And the question the test of small things ask is, can you handle more? Not do you want more. This is the hardest thing as a pastor I have to teach, especially people that know that God has something big for their life because they say things like, I want more. I want God's anointing. I want ministry. I want God to open up opportunity in my life. I want, I want what you, I want what they've got. I want that. But the question is not, do you want more? The question is, can you handle more? Can you handle more? And there's some people who have walked into 2021 looking at the little thing you have thinking, why, why, why is it so small? Why, do I, why am I only leading this small team and not the whole department? Why, why, do, why, why did they get the promotion and I didn't get the promotion? I've got more college than they do. I went to school for that. I've worked harder than they have. I deserve that. The question is not, do you deserve it or do you want it? The question is, can you handle it? And if you can't be trusted with this, God can't trust you with that. I'll give you the example in the Old Testament. David, King David, as you would know them, giant slaying King David, starts by slinging a slingshot at fence post in his daddy's back 40. He's learning and refining the art of killing and, and target practice with a sling 
when nobody is watching. And then one day the Bible says he kills a lion and he kills a bear with that sling. And then, and then for years this goes on and then his brothers are in battle one day and they call for food and David is allowed to bring food to the battlefield for his brothers. And he hears Goliath taunting the people of God across the valley. And he says out loud, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that would defy the armies of the living God? And Saul, the king, is overhearing David. Let me pause here and tell you, God is putting people in your life who are listening to how you respond to small things. And David says, I killed a bear and I killed a lion and I'm able to do this. And now David is faced with a nine foot opportunity and you know him as the Goliath killer. But he started on the backside of nowhere with no notoriety and nobody knew who he was. And the brother that was overlooked, it was the test of small things. What's in your life that's small now that God is trusting? Can I trust them with more? Luke 16 says, whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with more. It's the test of small things. I don't care how much you pray for a Mercedes. If you don't wash the Ford you have, you probably won't wash the Mercedes you're praying for. If you don't clean the one-bedroom studio apartment you've got now, you won't clean the ranch with 20 acres and a picket fence and horses that you're praying for. You can pray your head off for more, and if you don't pass the test of small things, you can't handle more. Say amen to that. The test of small things. Number two, write this down quickly. Number two, I, I, not all of them. I can't preach them all to you. I'll just give you these top three. Number two is the wilderness test. And the wilderness test comes in a dry season to prove your potential to make change. It asks the question, are you ready to make the changes that progress requires of you? The wilderness test, despite popular belief, is not can you make it in the wilderness. It's can you change in the wilderness. Can you change? Can I change my mindset? The children of Israel have been in slavery for 400 years. God brings them out of slavery. Two days after they cross over the Red Sea, they're already complaining to go back to captivity because not everybody that comes out of Egypt gets Egypt out of them. And so now they're locked in a slave mentality, no longer slaves to Egyptians, but slaves to their own mindsets. And God gives them a 40-year sentence in the desert to change their minds. Can you change when you don't feel Him? Can I adjust my thoughts and my attitudes and my appreciation and my loyalty? Can I adjust 50% of, of hardened criminals that have spent time in a penitentiary, a federal penitentiary, over 50% of them within the first three years end up back in federal penitentiary. You know why? They've learned how to live in captivity. They just haven't learned how to live in freedom. And the test of the wilderness is, can you live in freedom? It's why you need a small group, because sometimes you can't feel God. You need somebody beside you to go, he's with you. He's here. It's why in February, you need to join a small group at LifePoint, because when, you can't, when you're in a dry season, there's going to be a group of guys around a breakfast table somewhere. There's a group of women that, that, that are walking their dogs together or taking their preschoolers on a walk, and, and it seems so simple, but somebody in the group is going to say, I don't know where God is, and I'm struggling, and somebody else in the group is going to say, you can make it. God is with you in this season. You can be free. Change the way you think. The wilderness test. Do, can, can I make the changes necessary to change? Can you make the changes in 2021 that you didn't make in 2020 for more? It's the wilderness test. Jesus goes through the wilderness test. He's baptized by his cousin John the Baptist. Immediately, the Bible said he's taken by the Spirit to the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. It is only after the wilderness that Jesus enters his public ministry. Sometimes your greatest miracle is right after your darkest winter. Your darkest wilderness. Your loneliest time. It's Jesus and the devil, and that's it. It's lonely and dry. Do you have what it takes to change? in the wilderness test. Let me give you the third one really quick and then we'll pray. The third one is the test of time. And the test of time does not ask the question, am I still here? The test of time asks the question, did I get better or bitter 
with time. There are some people, um, I call them lost. I don't know what you call There are some people who don't look at expiration dates on their food. Do you know people like that in your life? You're lost. In just a moment, I'm going to give you a chance to come to God. I, I, have, I have friends who, who will smell. If you have to smell it, that's too bad. It's, it's too far. It's too far. And, and I, I have one particular friend, especially with milk, when the milk uh, carton goes out, he just says, oh, that's just a suggestion. No, brother, that's the law from God. That's not a suggestion. Saved people know that. You know why? Because over time, milk gets bitter. Over time, if you, it doesn't matter what brand it is. It doesn't matter how quality it is. It doesn't even matter how much you paid for it. Over time, left long enough, it will sour. But wine, on the other hand, it doesn't really matter how quality the grapes were when they started. If you leave them long enough, it gets better with time. And listen, listen to me. It doesn't really matter how your year went. It matters what happens in your year. Do I get bitter or did I get better? Do I walk out of this year full of heartache and anxiety and depression and mad and angry at God and angry at, at people and angry at my family and, and hurt and confused? Or am I deciding to walk into 2021 saying, you know what, I don't understand all of that, but it was only a test. It was only a test. It was a test of my faith. It was a test that I made it and I'm going to get better with time. I'm going to get better with time. I'm going to get better with time. An important key to your happiness over time. Here's the final thing. Write this in your note. An important key to your happiness in 2021 is not getting everything you want. It's wanting everything you get. It's deciding, I want this life. I want the calling God has on my life. I want the destiny God has for us. I want the career I'm in. I want the job I have. I want the wife I have. I want the kids I have most of the time. It's the test of time. Close your notes and look at me in the eyes. And 2020 was quite the test. It was a, quite a test of time. I, I remember in May when my phone rang from the deep south in deep south Arkansas where I was born and raised that my grandmother had passed away. I remember the family having to decide how we have an outdoor funeral with less than 20 people and a family with five children, each of them having children, and a grandmother who came from a, a, a siblings of 10. How do you limit a 90-year-old life? And as time has marched on in 2020, I wish I could tell you there were days I, I never got bitter, but I did. There were days I, I, I thought, why? why? Why this? As a pastor, there were days I would watch people in our church family who had poured their life savings into starting a business only to have it shuttered for six, seven, eight, nine months. Some of them now completely upside down. And there are days I went to God and said, I don't understand. And, 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 then, and then the longer the time went on, I, I started preaching to myself, which is usually what I do up here anyway. And I reminded myself, this is only a test. This is only a test. And, and if you'll allow me today to prophesy into your situation. I don't know you. You don't know me yet. I'd love to get to know you better and your story. But if this is your first time at Life Point, if somebody shared this with you and it's the first time you're logging on to see somebody preach on the internet, if, if this is the first time you walked into one of our locations, I don't really have to know where you come from to know you've been through. Because we've all walked through. I, I do want to prophesy into your situation, whatever it is, the loss of income, a job, hurt, pain, divorce. I read recently divorce is up 60%. It's already five out of 10 marriages into divorce and that rate is up 60% in the, in the final half of 2020, not even the first half. And you're in church today giving God one more chance on your marriage. Can I tell you, it's only a test. 
It's not a testament to hurt you, tear you down. It's not even temptation. Temptation causes you to sin. Testing causes you to grow. It's only a test. And today as we close our time together in God's presence and God's house, I'm going to ask you to be honest, to ask God, how am I doing in this test? I'd like to open some more doors in 2021. I'd like to take some more steps. I'd like to finally move on past some addictions I've dealt with. I'd like to finally move on past some heartache. I'd like to finally get healing for hurt. I'd like to finally repair some stuff that's been broken down. I'd like this to be my year. I want to claim what my pastor said, that, that this is the year of favor. And I, I really want all of that. But God, can I be trusted? Am I passing the test? So with your head bowed and your eyes closed at every location and at church online, would you just ask God in whatever way you do, help me. God, I pray for people today who feel like they're worth more. They deserve more, but it seems like little. It seems such a small thing, and, and they're believing God for more, but they're just struggling with small things. I pray that today would be the day they realized, oh, 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 I see what this is. This is a test. This is a test from God to prove I can handle more. God, help me to pass the test. I pray for people today who feel God is distant. Even in this prayer time, everyone else can feel the power of the Holy Spirit in the moment, but I don't feel anything. It's dry. It's wilderness. What do you do in the wilderness? You ask yourself, do I have what it takes to change? My mind, my attitude, my thoughts, my speech. Do I have what it takes to become the promised land dweller, the person God called me to be? I know, I know we're in this desert here. God gave 40 years to the children of Israel. Every single person over the age of 20 dies except Caleb and Joshua. They attended funerals of their cousins, their aunts, their uncles, their grandparents, their mothers, their fathers, their schoolmates, their college roommates. Every single person in the nation of Israel dies over 20 except Caleb and Joshua. Why? Because they believed. They changed their minds. It's the wilderness test. And then finally, I pray for people who've lived through hell. Time has not been on their side. It's been a hard year. It's been a hard decade. I feel what I'm praying for you right now at every location. I know you know. I could almost lay my hand on you. You know that you know that God brought you here today for this moment. The test of time says, can I heal? Am I going to get better? Or will I let bitterness and anger and hurt take root, ruin my destiny, steal my anointing, take away my future? Not today. Not today. God, I give you all of that. God, I give you the bitterness of my heart. I give you the time that I've walked through. Somebody once said that time heals all wounds. It doesn't. Time doesn't heal anything. Jesus heals all wounds. Time just marches on. Jesus changes people. So in this moment, Holy Spirit, change people who've had a tough time. Now with no one looking around and Nobody moving at every location. If you've never surrendered your heart totally to Jesus, I want to give you a chance to do that today. It's the Lordship test. I think it's the test every believer takes day after day, maybe moment after moment. It's the test that asks the question, is Jesus Lord of all of my life or some of my life? Rarely do I meet people who are just heathens and lost anymore, but I meet a ton of lukewarm, kind of on the fringes Christians. The time has passed such that Jesus isn't Lord of all of their life. The old preacher said it like this, if he's not Lord of all, he isn't Lord at all. If that's you today, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I cannot pray it for you, but I can pray it with you. As a matter of fact, everybody in every room is going to pray together out loud this prayer. Lord Jesus, come on from the depths of your heart, pray it. Lord Jesus, thank you for the cross for dying for my sins. I believe God raised you from the dead to give me eternal life. I repent of my sins. I give you my whole life. 
my past, my mistakes, my hurts, my habits, my future, my dreams, the promises of God. I give everything to you. Save me today. Come on, say it like you mean it. Save me today and be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. And everybody shout amen. Come on, give him a shout of praise, everybody. Hey, hope today's message was helpful for your life. I want to tell you, you should subscribe. The reason why, you can get content pushed to you all the time. You don't have to wonder if you ever missed anything. And also, I want you to think about giving. By giving, you can help us take this message to so many other people that are in need of some hope, need of some encouragement, and you can be a part of making a difference in the life of so many people. Look forward to seeing you right back here next time.